2002, Stephen Sogren wrote a book you might remember called The Perfectly Imperfect Church. Well, that's because it's made up of people. And people will always be imperfect because we're a work in progress. And that's a good thing because that means that there's lots of conflict. Eeyore would say, conflict is bad. But I'm here to tell you, conflict's good. It is one of the best things, believe it or not, that could ever happen to you. Conflict causes growth. Therefore, conflict equals growth. Conflict is challenging because it comes from both the outside and the inside. And as a biblical counselor, I share three places that we have opportunity to battle conflict. I think about the home behind us here. And when you look at the house, there's opportunity for the enemy. He can come into any room and touch us. Then we have places like the living room or the study, where a mother could end up in the conflict of social media. We think many times it's just our children that get absorbed, but I'm finding that more and more moms are spending hour upon hour in Facebook. Candy Crush. <laughs> All right, I see ya. And what's happening is our children are getting left behind. They're not getting the dinners that they should be. They're not getting the attention, the help of the homework. So that means conflict. And then in the house there, I also see that mirror up in the dressing room. And it's when we look within ourselves that sometimes we see the biggest conflicts. You know, one of my favorite times, you know, I know that you all can relate. One of my favorite times used to be that I used to belong to a church and as I sat on the board, I was fortunate to have the church key. And there were many times when I'd find myself in conflict and I'd go to the church in the middle of the night and I'd just pace back and forth in front of that altar and ask God, what do you want? What do you want? You've been there. I know that. So conflict is for everybody. We have to have it or else we get stagnant. Think about it. What does a pond look like when there's no movement? It turns green and almost a little smelly. That's not what we want for our lives. That's not what God wants for us. So the enemy goes to and fro to see who he can devour. So we're fighting the enemy, the world, and ourselves. Personal conflict happens in each of us because scripture says we all fall short. You know that place where you were at that one moment you do the things that you shouldn't be doing and the next you're not doing the things you should be? That kind of conflict. Well, let me share three tips so that you can know whether conflict is really driving growth. The first one is when conflict is driving growth if you are being challenged to be part of a solution instead of part of the problem. When something happens, whether it's in church, whether it's personal, I say, you know what? I got 30 seconds to contribute to this problem. After that, I want to be part of the solution, and I know that you do too. Philippians 4, 8 says, think on the things that are praiseworthy. So we can't stay in the negativity. We've got to go ahead and move to the positive. Number two, conflict is driving growth when it's bringing out and teaching others godly principles. And that might be in the understanding of maybe how we put reciprocity, the sowing and reaping, into somebody's lives. 
Well, sometimes that can be very difficult and cause conflict, especially when the pastor's talking about money. Oh, that's a conflict sometimes we don't want to deal with. But the reaping and sowing, if we give, God gives back. I give because God calls me to do so. So all of these things in our Christian walk, they tend to cause this conflict between the world that we sometimes have one foot in and the other one in our Christian walk. Like Mary Beth said earlier, we have to have our feet together and be balanced. That way the conflict subsides. The third one is conflict is driving growth when there's revelation or transformation in a situation. The place where resolution happens. Oh, that's such an awesome place. You know, you know that place inside when something comes up against you and you get through it and all of a sudden you go, ah, I know why that happened. I see it clearly now. Well, most of the time, it's easier to see it when we're a little bit farther from it. So we all need conflict to grow. It spurs us on, whether men or women, to the call that God has us to be. Our goal is to be overcomers. And one way to do that is believing in 1 John 4.4. 4. And I stand on it regularly. Because greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. So whether you're conflicted with boundaries, or maybe choosing your vocation, or God is calling you to do something that you didn't quite think should have been your calling, there's going to be opportunity for conflict. That conflict, though, is going to be a measurement tool that you can use. Because God says, all right, if I call you to this place in your life, will you really come? Will you let go of those other things and hear my call? 1 Peter 1.7 says, let the trial of your faith bring praise and honor. Conflict can cause growth. So let me leave you with saying that it is dear to my heart that there's a, a little saying. You might have heard it before, and many people take credit for it, so we're going to say that the author is unknown. And it'll be a challenge, because it says, Watch your thoughts, for they become your actions. Watch your actions, for they become your habits. Watch your habits because they become your character. Don't watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. You will be challenged in every single one of those areas in your life. Conflict causes growth. So it helps us to see what God is doing in our life. And the challenge through all those areas culminates into the final conflict when Jesus says, who do you say I am? Remember, conflict equals growth. Thanks for allowing me to share this time with you. God bless.